We have the magneto here, and we've identified an issue with the actual inner harness, so we're going to quickly pop it off. This engine has come out of a Spitfire Mark 19 that's undergoing major maintenance, where they strip the aircraft down to identify any issues. So this is the inlet ignition harness of a Rolls-Royce Griffin. And that's our damaged bit of harness. A team of engineers work around the clock here to keep the Battle of Britain Memorial flight ready for a busy season of air shows. So it, it only runs a very short distance from here to here. So there's not a whole lot involved. And it doesn't stop with the Mark 19. So that now can just be popped somewhere safe until we actually get around to fixing it. Basically at the minute we are refilling the coolant system on the engine because this winter we realised the radiator fitted on the previous season had a few leaks in it. Uh, went to get sent off to get repaired at an individual company. Came back saying it was unrepairable so we've had to get a new radiator hand purpose built and basically we're now filling the system to re-check that it doesn't leak, make sure there's no problems what's going to come from that being a new radiator and a new system putting in. It's not easy to find spares because they're also old, especially the earlier marks. It's a Mark V early version. Uh, there's less of them about and also less spares kicking about. So the radiator we've got currently now fitted was handmade by drawing by an in individual company. That's one of the biggest issues with working on aircraft that's 77 years old. Finding the parts are never easy. We'll check back in with the Mark V later on as it undergoes testing. One way they get around the issues of getting spares is by making do with what they've got and seeing if they can come up with any repairs in-house before making a call. So we fit this bias leaving, this stuff that basically if there's a fire in the engine bay, it's supposed to protect it from um, being exposed to constant flame for 15 minutes minimum. This hangar contains six Spitfires, two Hurricanes, two Chipmunks, a Dakota, and of course, the largest of them all, the Lancaster, which is only one of two that's capable of flying in the world. She's been good this year due to the fact that there's been quite limited amount of flying the last couple of years. So I've been quite lucky because you can get quite it can get quite mucky in there sometimes after a longer winter of throwing things apart, but she's been quite nice this winter. It's been fairly steady going. All the panels come off for inspections. Uh, the engines, we take, we take the top part away and we inspect as much as we can. At that point, industry might have to come and have a look into the deep parts of the engine should that come about. All the major work's been carried out to make sure it's at an acceptable flying level. But now at the minute, we're actually sat waiting for a lot of the safety features, so such as fire bottles, uh, harnesses for the crew, and cargo nets for all the tie down points. So it's the little things that are keeping us at the minute. With the Lancaster in waiting, the engineers can focus on the smaller jobs during this maintenance period. Catching them early is the key before they become a major issue. A lot of the flying controls are cable, they run under the seat. And all the tensioning locators for the cable are actually under the, under the seat. In the bottom, the cables run from your pedals at the front, cables run down all the way to the tail, and if I move the tail, basically we're retensioning the cables up, making sure they're at the right tension, they don't, don't come loose. They're loose, when it goes to move the controls, it might not move it. We inspect and maintain this aircraft to a high degree, to the point where we're really into the detail Really good point, we can't, we can't fix everything in all honesty, but everything we can't fix, we take really seriously, even down to the finer details. Bear in mind this aircraft is, is a historic aircraft. It's old, so we really need to look after her. Now it may seem like a really, uh, really minor crack, but what we're thinking about is, can the crack propagate? Can it cause an issue to the pilot? Is there a risk to safety in that regard? And we do this on the whole aircraft. As you can see there, we have something called a stop drill. So what we're considering here is the crack will um, propagate, but we're trying to stop it from propagating. There are um, cracks 
over the fuselage, but because we do a uh, multitude of inspections, they're, they're all captured. Back at the Mark V, and it's not looking good news for the engineers. Give it a couple of pumps. Yeah, no, it's your valve. You hear that? When we get to about between 8 and 12 on the gauge, there should be a large bang and the pressure relief valve that's on top of the tank itself should release the pressure to keep the system safe. Currently what's happening is we're getting above 5 and it's just dropping the pressure. So as you can see here, we're sitting about 4, start pumping up. And it's hardly holding any pressure. So what's happening there is all the pressure we are pushing in is getting to that valve and just then dumping out to atmosphere through the pipework. Plan B is now to get a new valve. And then probably take the last one out currently and replace with uh, whatever stock of new we have. When I say new, it's probably original from when they were made, but new to us because we've not used it yet. <laughs> But despite the setback, the engineers are confident the Mark V will make it to this year's air shows. We'll put all the work we can in to get her ready, like all we for every aircraft here. So she'll make the season and she'll get flying and you'll see her in the skies, hopefully, displaying like she normally does every year. The flyers have either Rolls Royce Merlins or Packard Merlins. The engineers here wouldn't have trained on aircraft of this age, instead working on more modern varieties. So it's a case of learning as they go. If you look at the way I was trained and the way the technicians are trained, they're trained on um, jet engines. You look over the road with uh, Typhoon, that's what we're all trained to look at. And yet you have a Merlin engine and Griffin engines and um, other types used on the different air systems. We, we have to train ourselves. So this place is not only a, a, f a flight and we have displays, but we're very much a, a school when we do our work internally. As well as getting them ready for air shows, the team are working to preserve decades worth of history to commemorate the veterans and fallen that the aircraft represent. Kirsty Chambers forces news the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight at RAF Coningsby. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.